Now then, I think it's fair to say that Port Vale's team isn't exactly laden with star talent, but one man has consistently flourished for them. Tony Naylor, a striker who scores more than his fair share of spectacular goals. A mild-mannered man off the pitch, but a relentless poacher on it. And he recently added to his already impressive list of special strikes against Tranmere. I think it was uh, Martin Foyle and Alan Tankard were played a 1-2 and Tanks just played the ball into me around about the six-yard box and I just uh, did a little back heel which got me a little bit of time to put the ball into an empty net. Naylor also scores many of his goals with his head, none more spectacular than the one against Neighbours Stoke. It's one of them where you close your eyes and hope. Uh, I, I, I remember that game because there was uh, quite a lot riding on that game. I think we was, you know, we both started off fairly well. Uh, and I think really, I think if we'd have won that game, we'd have gone possibly sixth or seventh in the league. Um, so, we, you know, we really needed to win that game. Unfortunately, we lost. But uh, I think it was just an header from the edge of the box. And it's one of them where, you know, it just it just got whipped in and I just got my head on the end of it and it flew in the top corner. Don't often see that. Perhaps his best-known effort came against Sunderland. It was nationwide goal of the season two years ago. For me, that you know, that's a great goal. I think it's possibly the one goal that I think everybody remembers. Um, you know, obviously, thanks to Sky Sports because they're showing it all the time. But uh, I think it was Dean Glover who played the ball into me and had me back to goal. I uh, just back heeled it uh, through one of the defender's legs and just went on and put to the edge of the box and bent it into the top corner. Like I say, it's one of them that you try certain things. You know, you don't expect them to come off, but it did that day. But that's not his favourite goal. So what is? I think that would have to be me goal uh, against Manchester City. With me being a, a lifelong Man City supporter, it was... Uh, very nice to, to score on the allowed turf, as they say. Um, I think it was uh, uh, a long punt down the field uh, from one of our defenders, which uh, went straight onto the head of one of their centre-halves, who kindly uh, headed it up in the air straight to me, and uh, po possibly one of the sweetest shots I've ever struck, and volleyed it into the far corner. But uh, unfortunately, I couldn't turn away and uh, celebrate to the Man City supporters. It was, you know, it was uh, straight down to the other end, to the Vale supporters. John Rudge signed Naylor in 1990 for a mere £20,000, but their relationship was soured by the players' transfer request at the end of the 98 season. Brian Horton took over in January of this year, and Naylor's relationship with the new man is good. He's fine. Um, he's done really well since he's come in. He's, he's changed quite a few things, but he's very straight. Uh, and I suppose as a footballer, that's what you want. You know, you want somebody who's, who's not going to lie to you for a start. You know, uh, he's going to be up front. You know, if he doesn't agree with something, then he'll let you know, which, which is fine. So he's happy and settled for now, but what does the future hold? Well, I've got two years left on my contract, hopefully. I'd like to think that, you know, maybe get another one and stay at Port Vale. Um, but for the next two years, um, hopefully, plenty of goals. Well, he certainly does have a, a spectacular knack in front of goal. There he is, 31 years of age, only five foot eight, as Chris Terry said. Obviously, really wants to play for Manchester City, doesn't he, Nigel? <laughs> well, I think if you've been a supporter of Man City over the years, uh, obviously you want to go and play for them, especially th through some of the troubled times they've had. He most probably felt, well, I should be there knocking the goals for them as well. But uh, he's a very good player. Tricky in and around the box, got quick feet, gets across defenders well, and that's why he scores goals with his heads because he gets in there brave across defenders. But uh, they need him to keep putting the ball in the back of the net, Paul, to pull them up the lead because they are, you know, struggling towards the bottom. Do you think that uh, at the age of 31, Ray, he's missed out on his chance of a, of a dream move if? at the end of the day that's what he really like no I don't I think if you can score goals Marcus there's always someone out there that will that will take you on and that he can score goals because he's got mobility never stationary always on the move and I think that's something that troubles the bigger defender in the nationwide leagues well for Tony and Port Vale it was a very narrow squeak last season Survival wasn't confirmed until the final day of the season against Bury. Ironically, it would have been Vale themselves going down in Bury's place had this year's goal difference rule applied.
It was straight in at the deep end for Brand Horton's men when on the opening day of the new campaign they held promotion favourites Blackburn to a goalless draw at Ewood Park and might even have won it. Their first home game of the season was against Brian Little's West Brom. A mistake by Vale keeper Kevin Pilkington let Lee Hughes in for the opener. Just before half-time, James Quinn was brought down in the area by Alex Smith. New signing Jeff Minton levelled from the spot, his first for the club. But a well-crafted goal clinically finished by Kevin Kilban ensured all three points went to the baggies. The following week it was off to St Andrews and Port Vale did themselves no favours when in the second minute Tommy Widrington was sent off for that horrendous tackle on Paul Furlong. Brown Hughes put the game beyond their reach with his second and Birmingham's fourth. A high scoring draw in the return leg of the Worthington Cup wasn't enough to prevent Vale going out to Chester for the second year running. Two goals from Luke Beckett contributed to a 6-5 aggregate win for the third division side. A welcome victory followed. Tony Naylor's trickery decisive in the 64th minute at home to Tranmere. But Loftus Row wasn't to be a happy hunting ground as Queen's Park Rangers took an early lead through Stuart Wardley. He then added a second in the 63rd minute. Jeff Minton pulled one back following a foul on Tony Rougier. Chris Kawamia put Rangers further ahead. Anthony Gardner's header wasn't enough and a tough August ended with a fourth defeat. Well, let's hear from Brian Horton. He's with Chris Terry. Brian, in the uh, programme notes, you say that you're not happy with uh, the, way, the, the points you've had at the start of the season. We never are as managers. Uh, I just feel that we could have probably had more. We haven't, so I mean, the, the league doesn't tell lies, does it? I mean, we, we need points desperately at the moment. Is it, uh, is it the form you're unhappy with, or, or, or is it simply the results? Just results, really. I think, uh, some of the performances have been OK. Uh, QPR second half the other night did well. West Brom here lost 2-1, and I thought the performance was OK. So, you know, as, as again, most managers were making uh, little mistakes, moaning about the defensive mistakes, and I think that's been the story of our season, really, that we've got punished uh, from defensive errors. It is very early days, but no one likes hovering above the relegation zone. And what is it, 20th, I think you're in at the moment? No, no one likes to be down there. I mean, at the start of the season, you know, when we have a, a chat about it all, you know, they've been uh, eternal strugglers here. And, uh, you know, said, come on, let's, let's have a little bit of a guide. Don't just think we're relegation fodder before the season starts. Um, and, and I feel that we're, we're capable of, of doing better than that. What about today's opponents, Grimsby, who uh, have done quite well against uh, Vale recently? They beat us 1-0 here la late on last year. Uh, I have great respect for what Alan Buckley does. They always play good football. I saw them play a crew last Friday, uh, perform very well. They knock it about. And last year here, they, in one of my uh, first games, they beat us 1-0. Convincingly, and I changed the side around dramatically after that, just before the deadline. And of course, I, I feel that that had uh, great rewards because we stayed up. But this is a match that uh, you, you expect to win and must win, but you, you do want to consolidate a, a better position than you're in at the moment. We do. I mean, it, you need to win your home games. I mean, uh, whether you're going to get promotion or stay off relegation, uh, you need to win your home games. And um, we had a good win against Tranmere here last Saturday. A good performance all round, and that's what I'm looking for again today. Finally, briefly, Marcus Bent back from uh, suspension up front. Will that add firepower to your strike force? Yeah, well, Marcus is quick, and he, he, he wants to play up front. Um, he played wide during pre-season, got five goals from, pre from, from wide areas, and uh, I feel he's better there. But today, he's got a chance to go and prove what he can do in front of cameras, and if he does it, you know, good luck to him. Smashing, Brian. Thanks very much indeed.